Okay, welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stock live stream, September 22nd. We are back with Fans Unite. Darius Agdami, the president of Fans Unite, F A N S F U N F F. Darius, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Good morning. How are you? Uh, great, Darius. Always a pleasure to have you. Fans is one of the one of the all time favorites here. You know, it's uh, it was a ten bagger already. Now we're gonna get you back to ten bagger number two. You know, we gotta get the stock back to at this point. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, Eight dollars. Eight dollars is the next level. You know, so uh, so there's a lot of exciting things going on. What I'd like to do today, Darius, really is gonna be to I want to show people a demo. We're gonna have some demos to show people, right? Some of the new games. Uh, the esports betting platform, and, and then I want to get into some questions, some Q and A. We'll talk about you know some of the new things you're doing. Um, talk about some potential M and A. Talk about you know sports betting in Canada. All there's a lot of developments, initiatives that are going on, which I think people are not aware of. I mean, people think just because the stock is not moving that you know you guys are you know just. Uh, you know, hanging out in the office. <laughs> a, lot, a lot going on in the back. There's yeah. a lot going on every, every day, right? So, so I want to get to those questions. And of course, all of, all those of you watching, please ask your questions because your questions that really make these events special and decide for yourself if fans is going to be our 10-bagger, double 10-bagger again. Uh, and again, look, uh, for anybody that's brand new, our goal is to bring you those stocks which have that... 10x to 100x upside. So these are companies going after multi-billion dollar opportunities um, with multiple catalysts in place to ignite that uh, shareholder value. And they're at a key inflection point. And uh, so really exciting thing is going on with fans right now. So Darius, with that said, um, should we kick off a demo with the uh, with the uh, with uh, Vamos? What do you want to show us first, Vamos? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Yeah. So Vamos, I mean, just high level, you know, from a lot of our viewers uh, who know, we have a couple of B2C platforms that we run. These are our direct to consumer platforms, our flagship being McBookie in the Scottish market. And then we have Vamos, which is our Brazilian platform um, focused on esports, but traditional sports are, are coming to this platform. So launch a new platform uh, here in Vamos. Um, this is it. You can kind of see we have our um, esports betting, all the different games are coming in, all the different types of Esports, um, which you can make your bets on, of course, not uh, depending on your jurisdiction. And then um, we have our stream betting platform, which we've shown be before, where you can actually live bet and watch the games while while bets are coming through, as well as our casino platforms with all our different games. Uh, you know, some of our own games, as well as the games we've integrated uh, via the aggregator partners. So tons of different games. So we're excited about. Um, this new platform, we're starting to see some some growth now on Vamos, which is great, um, and hopefully we can continue that growth here in the next in the next couple of months. Hey, Darius, before you, you show the games, how, so the Vamos is, is this is available. This is in uh, Brazil, right? Correct. Yeah. This is in the Brazilian market. Okay. So how does this work? This is a, this is a B two C. This is a consumer facing side, right? Consumer facing. It's on our own technology, of course, um, but this is direct to consumer. Okay, so somebody goes to say, and what? So what am I? What are we looking at right now? Is this, is this what the what the customer is looking at? This is like an internal page on the site. What is this? Yeah, so this is this is what the customer will see when they when they log in. They'll see all okay. the different uh, esports, the different leagues. Okay. You can click different leagues. You'll see all the different betting. Okay. okay. Oh, you know, is it possible to blow it up so that we because like right now the screen is kind of small, so I can't see them. So the, there's different leagues. So what what can what kind of things can somebody bet on? Like right, okay, so I'm looking here. Let's say League of Legends, right? Yeah, you can bet on CS:GO, Dota 2, League okay. of Legends, Overwatch, the, the most popular esports leagues, um, all the way down. From Super so Smart. walk walk me through this. Okay, so there's an esports league. So where is this? It's a tournament. It's an online tournament happening right now. Yeah, there'll be different um, okay. different matches around the world. Okay. And okay, so I can't. It's, I, it's very small, so I can't. We have to blow it up. So, is it possible to expand the screen? I can't zoom in really. Ah, okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so how do we? Okay, so so what do we? So in terms of uh, what can what are the bets that you can make here right now? So yeah, so here we went under Dota two, so which is one of the the esports. Um, here's the Champions League, the World Championships for West Europe, the Pro Series in Americas. You see all the different games. This one's currently live. Uh, BB playing Brain. Who do you want to bet on? You can choose Moneyline. Your bet pops up here. 
you can bet it individually or you can couple it with other bets, singles, doubles, tri trixies. So lots of different options, which is great. We're trying to give our users the most robust, you know, esports platform out there. And then we're going to add traditional sports and other sports after that as well. Okay. Uh, question coming in, uh, uh, catalyst is, and what catalyst, when will you implement real time fantasy sports betting in USA for games like Fortnite or Dota? For fantasy sports, um, not a, a huge focus, I guess. Um, we do have the fantasy side of things, but um, really more focus on both pregame and live in play on those. And we have live in play for those matches already. Okay. So, okay. So this is, so these are some of the bets and uh, how many, so how long has this been, has this been running right now in, in the, for the Brazil market, Vamos? Yeah. So we, we launched it um, earlier this year on kind of a beta and then we launched our new platform um, on the chameleon here on Vamos. Um, so this has only been up for a few weeks. Um, new platform, continue to test out. People are coming in now. There people are registering, people are depositing. So now it's just about growth. Okay, and how do they how do they learn about this? And there's like, who's betting on these esports games? Actually, so you have a bunch of different uh, uh, things you can bet on because I'm I, I see that like at the top of the page you have highlighted like you know League of Legends, yep. and then all the way down you have more. Um, what else do you have? It's dark. I can't really see it. It's 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 all the different leagues. Yeah, we we okay. we have a team down in Brazil. Uh, we have a team up here doing marketing. Uh, we've signed deals, um, sponsorship deals to get our word the word out. You know, it's early on, so we're trying to get the word out. Um, and again, mostly just really focus on the Brazilian market. So um, we have a we have a really good team right now marketing that. Okay. So who's and who's do you have demographics like who's the audience who's who's making these bets? Is it like uh, an age demographic? I mean, like what what kind of data do you have? It's the younger demographic, yeah, the males between 18 and 35 who, who really focus on esports. Okay, and how much are they betting typically? Oh, this is, oh, this is Brazil, so it's a, probably a different type of you know, betting. What, how much are they typically betting on these games? It, it's very different, you know, from a dollar to five dollars to fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. It's, it's okay. really, yeah. Oh, so somebody can bet like a dollar. It's like a, okay, it's like a fun bet, basically. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So I don't know anything about this, but like, how long does the game go on for? Like, in other words, is it like an hour or like, what's how many bets can you make a day? You can make tons. So you can make pre-match bets on you know who will win, but then once the game starts, you can start betting on things that will happen within the game. You know, how many kills will a certain person get? You know, who will have the first kills? All these okay. types of things. It's quite engaging throughout the game. Okay, and we actually saw that. Okay, so right now, so I think what we're looking at right now on the screen is the actual betting side. But then I think when the game starts, like you're, you're streaming it, right? We do have yeah. Game, have so people can see it. Is there a way we could? Because I think where you showed that the first time around, where you know you can you can see what's going on, and then you can make bets during like, hey, you could bet on this or that. You know, like is this guy gonna you know kill this guy, whatever that all that stuff. Yeah, we do have that. I don't have that demo demo right now. We have like the live stream bets, but not right now. Okay, okay, because I, we, yeah, we saw that, like, that was like one of the early things you showed us the act, yeah. which is which is pretty cool. So exactly. in stream, in stream betting, uh, how big is that? How big is that for you? The in stream betting live, you know, during the you know the thing. Uh, in stream is huge. You know, pregame is nice always, but okay. in stream allows you to get instead of you know one someone someone might bet one time before the game. Then once that game starts, it could be five, ten, twenty different bets within the game. So no, because it seems more fun. I mean, like you know, betting is like before the game is like I mean, that's kind of dull. You know, when you're watching it, when you're watching it, then you're into it and you want to say, hey, is this guy going to, you know, do this, that, whatever. You can have the next kill and it's like that instant gratification because you'll know who won or who got that next kill within minutes or seconds. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. And, okay, so this is, so th so you got the, the platform here, right? And uh, let's see, okay. <clears throat> now, on Vamos, do you also have the casino games, the, um, your, your games, are they also available on Vamos? Yeah. So we have our casino game section. And okay. we're adding, we have Vortex, Titan Gems, Loot Hunter, and then we're adding more of the games that we, we just completed as well. Okay. And and so basically, um, so in other words, while somebody is is, is betting on esports, uh, yeah, they might be bored or something. They're waiting for something to start. They can they can in the meanwhile they can uh, play one of these games, which is where you make the real money. Is that right? It's always, yeah, it's always a goal to, to cross promote the casino platform for your users um, and both ways. You want your casino players to then go bet on sports. So um, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, okay. So 
I think one of the big things is, I, I think the, the, the part, the big story really is going to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Darius, is that really the big money is going to come in from having this a uh, portfolio of your own uh, games, which you're going to be, you know, licensing out to, you know, casinos worldwide through these aggregators and then getting the percentage of uh, the revenues generated, or I guess the, the drop or how, whatever the accounting term is. That's one of the arms. Yeah. So we have three, we have three arms of the business that are revenue generating. So the first is the direct to consumer, the B2C platform. So McBookie, Vamos, and we'll look to launch, you know, new ones in, in niche markets that we think we can do well. Then we have the B2B side of things where we license our technology. So the chameleon platform. So every client we sign there, um, we get the upfront fees, we get the fixed fees, and then we also get the monthly rev shares, which is awesome. And then, yeah, the third part of our of our division is the game studio out in Malta, um, which I know is, is the earliest kind of part of our business, but again, one of the most exciting. Okay, but the, I mean, the rev, the rev share from the games, that's where you re make the real money from the, because you know, when you license one of these games out, you, you're gonna get, I don't know, what is it? Temper, I think it's 10% of the rev, the, re the net revenues that the, the casino generates. You keep it's it's like, yeah, we, Each deal is different, but yeah, it's we get a yeah. rev share for, for every time the game's played in one. Okay. Okay. So let's. Um, okay. So let's take a look at some of these. New, uh, yeah, I know you have some new games. So you want to uh, yeah. show us some of the new stuff? Yeah. Let me bring it up. So okay. um, I know we've shown. I know we've shown a lot of people the the older games. So you know we've shown Loot Hunter and Crash Heist. So they're in the demo reel. I'll kind of skip forward on those. We have some new games which are really exciting with Race Rift, um, and then. We'll also show some kind of concepts for some of our newer games. So right now we have six games built, um, seven and eight are underway. I think we've always mentioned our goals to get to 10 this year and, and we're gonna push to get those. So yeah, I'll let this, it's a longer video, but I'll let this play. You guys can kind of see some of our newer games. Um, again, we've, we've, shown, we've shown Loot Hunter before. Um, we've, shown, we've shown Crash Heist. Um, this is Titan's Gem. It's a bit loud. Um, Team Vortex, which is our fourth game, and then I'll uh, I'll let it play from here. You guys can see see some of our newest games coming in.
here are some of the concepts that are, that are coming up. Uh, Darius yes so so uh, so oh oh we can go I'm sorry I didn't need to interrupt you I, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions uh go back go back uh, you can bring that back up well, uh, hold on a second okay, okay. Uh, so, so the last the last things we were looking at were basically I'm assuming that's like the uh some some of the sketches or the concepts uh which shows kind of the user interface and all that like the the the, the the formatting and all, all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, just giving everyone a bit of a sneak peek of the games we're now in development. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I get, put, let's get that one back on the last, the last <laughs> one. I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. Oh, no, hang up, hang up. Hang up. Hang up. I think I got a screen okay. share again. And then and I want to ask you a couple of questions about this, and I think we have some audience questions also. Okay, so, so what are we looking at here? This is just a, a, a soccer game, so we're trying to add a bit of a sports feel to this one. Okay. Um, okay. So I think there was, yeah, the, there was, there's a few there that we sh that I showed. Okay. Very loud. Uh, Fortune of the Chosen, uh, Secrets of the Desert. Okay. Our soccer game, and the last one is a uh, is a happy farm. Okay. So okay, so so basically, so, okay, happy farm. Okay, let's 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 see the let's see happy farm. We didn't see that yet. Okay, okay. Oh, so these are basically what is that? Is that is that is that something that you're showing? Is that like for internally that you're showing to your team, or is that you're you're sharing that with some of your partners, explaining them the de the target demographics and all that, or is, is that what this we're looking at here? Yeah. These are kind of our, our concepts, our mood boards, how the game's going to work, how the payouts are going to work, the graphics, the sounds, the colors, and then our team goes and builds those games. So this is kind of a sneak peek of all the, I think the, the next four games are going to get built. So they've already started development on some of them. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the secrets of the desert, that looks pretty, that looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, I think race, race trips my favorite now. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so, so, no, but so the, so the, the, uh, the racing one, is that, is that live now? Uh, almost just going through oh. certification and testing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and then and then basically, so you know, it's interesting. You know, last time you were on, I think it was you or Scott. People were asking, "Well, one of these games coming out," and and you only sh you didn't show all these others. So maybe people were thinking, "Eh, maybe these guys don't have it." <laughs> but apparently, yeah. now they're looking at the pipeline. So es essentially, what you're showing us is your pipeline of games. Is that games to be launched for the rest of this year for 2021? Our goal is to get, yeah, complete 10. So I think I mentioned four is done, race trip, and the fruit game is, is five and six. Those are done. They're just going through certification and testing. And okay. then the other ones are starting to be completed now. We want to finish them by end of the year. Okay. 
in the total there, I think maybe it's 12 games, but yeah, we're trying to complete the 10. Oh, because every time we, game, we go through uh, certification, we, we get GLI certification on all the games. Okay, so essentially, so it's good that we're showing people exactly, hey, this is the pipeline. This is, you know, this is, uh, it's, this is what's coming up. We've done this. Here's what we have. Uh, just to address this question, is this for kids? Is this for like eight-year-olds or is this for grown-ups with cash to spend? These are adults, yeah. Yeah, you have to be of age to play in the casino. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, this is not, this is not for like little kids. Yeah. This is basically, um, okay. So who, the, the younger, so, younger demographic of adults. Yeah, but, I mean, essentially you're so, okay. So one thing is the key thing, what you're doing different than, uh, you know, a lot of people in the industry, or maybe they they might be going in your direction is your focus is on that, you know, 18 to 35, the millennial demographic, maybe even younger, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20, I don't know. Not, but, not yeah. Yeah. But 18 to 35. 18 uh, to 35, yeah. So that's your demographic, and that's kind of a, 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 a kind of a mark that's been kind of overlooked. I mean, up until recently, by most of the the, the, the players in in the industry. So, uh, so these games, okay. Now I know there's kind of sensitivity. You don't want to say okay, each game can generate X amount of millions. That's so, all. But but the bottom line is when you license these games out to places like uh, the Ear and, and other aggregators. You're going to get a revenue share of the the amount that people are uh, betting, or, or essentially, uh, how should we say, uh, losing uh, when they play. So in other words, you know, there, there's a hundred million in betting that month on your games through that aggregator, and you know the 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 loss is you know I don't know, let's say seven million, right? So you share part of that seven million with the casinos. Correct. Yeah. So we build our games. Not only do they go on our own platforms, our own BTC, but then we plug them into aggregators. Those aggregators uh, are plugged into hundreds of casinos, and any of one of those casinos can turn on our games, market that to their customers, and like, hey, here's a new hot game. Uh, as people play them and win or lose, of course, you know they have a guaranteed return to players. So in the long run, the games will win money, and then we take a rev share, split it with the casino, give some to the aggregator, take the rest ourselves. Okay. Now, one one key thing. Uh, I, again, I I I really don't want to like. I don't want to tire of emphasizing this, but the big thing everybody is talking about these days is you know the sports betting, sports betting, all that good stuff, right? The reality is, Darius. I mean, from what I'm understanding, is the margins in sports betting are, you know, kind of thin, and they're going to get thinner, right, as more competition comes in. So the way for these guys to make money is through these type of casino games. Because somebody's going to come to their platform, and while they're there, it's sort of like a loss leader. You know, uh, on you know Thanksgiving, you know Walmart, you know they they get the TV for you know twenty nine ninety five to get, to get people in the door, but then they make the real money on everything else people buy. Is that that's the idea? Yeah, I mean you, you definitely make money on on sports betting as well. Uh, the casino is just twenty four seven online right so you want to you always want to cross promote them into the casino get them playing get them playing uh table games getting playing slots and then going back to the sports and betting on sports again okay yeah but in other words, once they're there the long it, you know it's like a it's like a physical casino the longer people are there the more they're gonna the casino is gonna make right in the long so, run, yeah. In the, yeah i mean just like a vegas casino they get the sports book right and then they have a massive floor you know people get lost and they play whatever games there are yeah. Uh, okay. By the way, you also have okay. So from what? I, okay, um, and I'm, I want to dive into all the new stuff, but like Mig Bookie, that's one of your. Okay, so you have a couple of consumer facing things now. You, you got this. You got Vamos, which is in Brazil, right? Uh, you have Mig Bookie, which is uh, in Scotland and now the UK, right? The UK, UK also. Yeah. It's, okay. it's all in the UK, but we really focus on the Scottish demographic. Okay. So you have, you have these kind of a lot of these niche type of markets. So so. With Mig Bookie, you actually have something where you offer almost like a live uh, table games. You like you have a, you have an actual dealer you're showing. Oh yeah, yeah party, we, have, right? we have live dealer games on Mig Bookie. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's almost like you're in a casino. Like you have an actual person. You're seeing them. They're putting out the cards. Yep. Okay, and that's and that from and that was like one of the your big and I think when you brought that on, that like generated some massive revenues uh, last quarter. It was good because we brought that on last year. I think it was earlier on in the pandemic when sports kind of came to a screeching halt. So we quickly had to add new things to the platform. We added the live dealer casino. We added virtual sports, and that helped us not really disrupt our revenue uh, once once the pandemic started there. 
Okay. And, but so, by the way, so one thing I wanted to say: how what's happening with Mick Booker? We haven't heard about Mick Booker in a while. How is how is that? Uh, you know, what what's happening there? Yeah, it's been great. Um, Q2 numbers came out; they were strong again. Uh, we had the Euro Cup. August is always a bit of a slow month with, with most of soccer not not in, but all the leagues are now back, so ramping it up again. Uh, we had a goal with, I mean, not just as a company, but with McBooking itself. I think we had a goal to double revenue from 2019 to 2020. We did that. We try to double it again this year. We're on pace to do that. We want to double it again next year. Okay. So um, I want to ask you, well, two things. They're really, you know, we talk about inflection point on, on, on our program, right? So inflection point. So like when you first showed up last year, basically 12 months ago, roughly, um, and at that point, you know, that was the, there, there's actually several inflection points for a company, right? So last, like around September, October, that was the, kind of the first inflection point where you're really just launching onto the market, right? Now you're actually, you're in a position where you, 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 you've raised a bunch of cash, you've made a bunch of progress. So in other words, you've proven out some, some of these concepts, those things are working and is there essentially a second inflection point, which is the, in other words, you're generating revenues now, but the real money, when does that come in? In other words, what, what I mean by that, Darius, is when are we going to see that thing where you have, you know, 10 of these games out with aggregators, the money starts rolling in, and then you also have the, the B2C, the consumer, the McBookies making the value. When are we going to see that thing where people are going to like sit up and, and pay attention? They're going to be like, wow, this is... These guys are for real. In other words, when is it going to be that aha moment in the market? Is that is that going to be January, February? Because when it, it looks like it's coming up. Yeah, I think we're we're very close to that inflection point. Like you mentioned, we had kind of the, the arms of the business that when we first came on, we're just starting to commercialize. I think we had one or two games, you know, completed. Um, our B two C platforms are just just getting ready to launch. Uh, so now we're seeing growth on those. Our games are now doing, uh, building a lot, right? We want to get that 10 B2B clients are coming on board. Uh, I think I saw a question about Moneyline. That's our next B2B client that's going to be coming on board. Uh, yeah, from, from Scott there, yeah, our goal is to get them up uh, very shortly here in, in Q4. Um, that's going to go under a multi-license, so we're excited about that. Then that lets, lets us, you know, go get other B2B clients and launch those. So every B2B client we bring on board, uh, we get that three-year contract, which is sticky, which is awesome. We get the monthly fixed fees, which just continues to compound our revenue, and then we get to share in the upside with all these cost with all these clients as they grow. We grow with them on the rev share. Okay, and, and okay, so so the B two B again, it's it's money line. This company money line, and can you give can you give us some examples of other B two B clients that you, that you have some of these casinos that that you license stuff out to. Who, yeah, well, I mean, the other, the other one we've spoken about before was, was of course, the Sky Casino, which we signed quite a while ago uh, due to some regulations. We've been waiting on that one to launch. Um, it's making progress, so we're hoping that'll be the next one to launch, uh, money line in that one. And then there's other ones that we're in talks with that we're hope hopefully to sign and, and get them up next year. Okay. And how many, like, can you talk about, like, just so, so people can do some math, like, is there a typical dollar amount that you think a, a typical b2b client can generate or they're all different to degree right they're all different sizes but they're all different it really, yeah it really depends on the the customers they have already uh, the volume they're doing on their sports books whether they're new and they're ramping up or whether they already have an existing base and we're just coming in and switching the tech to ours so it really it really does depend um whether we're getting that rev share on day one or whether that rev share starts kicking in at, at month six six or nine when they're really okay. But, but how much dollar, dollar wise, how much can each each B two B guy generate? I mean, ballpark. They can generate significant amounts. You know, you look at some of our. You can, they can generate over seven figures um, in, in in fixed fees and rev shares a year. Okay. Okay. And how many of these can you get? How many of these B two B clients are out there? In other words, how many of these online casino operators are floating around worldwide? Hundreds. I mean, how, how many can we get? Not sure. Obviously, we want to get as many as many as we can. But okay. um, there's there's hundreds out there. You're seeing a lot of tech providers get swallowed up. You know, something we talk about. Um, Why is that happening? In other words, it's it's interesting. I'm seeing like some crazy multiples valuations in the space. Like, I mean, how difficult? I guess the question is this, Darius. How difficult? What kind of moat do you have? Like, how difficult is it for somebody to duplicate what you're doing? Like, how much is it worth for them to? 
can they develop it internally or should, could they buy you? Like what is, or how difficult is this to do these things? It's a big moat and you're seeing it, you know, everyone realizes tech is, is obviously key to scalability. It's one of the biggest cost centers and people try to build it and realize, okay, this is, this is going to take years. Um, you see some of the biggest companies like DraftKings decide they're going to go buy the tech. Um, a company that size, uh, you saw Bally's do it with Betworks, uh, can do it with Coolbet. So I think people rather buy than build. Um, a lot of our competitors are getting swallowed up, which opens the door for us to get more clients, um, which is great. So we've been building the tech for years. Uh, there's a pretty big moat and we're continuing to add features. We're continuing to make our platform more robust and more scalable and more flexible. So we think we're continuing to expand that moat. Okay, and just and just to clarify, when you when you're talking about the tech, are you, you're talking about which aspect? Are you talking about the, these games, these RNG games that you, the casino games, or the back end? Which parts? Are, what's the difficult part? Everything, the whole everything. thing. The, the chameleon platform is what I'm really talking about. Um, with everything that we've built over the last few years, that includes obviously the casino games and the aggregators that we're bringing into our casino, um, all the different data providers we're integrating, the player management system, the payment processors, all that type of stuff together. Okay, so essentially what you're doing, okay, so the Chameleon Platinum, now, now you just announced uh, a couple days ago your, 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 uh, some new data provider partnerships for the Chameleon Platform, right? Which is going to, from you know, my understanding, it's going to make it much more robust, and we'll, we'll get into all the details over there. But just, so essentially the Chameleon Platform, what it does is essentially anybody who's got an online casino, and there's, again, thousands of these guys, what does it do for them? The, the, the chameleon essentially help gives them a turnkey solution to do what esports betting, uh, different sport. Like, what is what's the what are you doing different for them that anybody else can do? Yeah, it doesn't have to just be like a casino operator. Anyone who wants to launch a sports book, esports book, or casino can come to us and we can get them up and running very quick. Um, whether they have a license or they want to piggyback off of ours, depending on the jurisdiction, we give them that full turnkey solution, their logos, their branding, get them up and running very quick. Now they can start generating revenue by bringing in customers, taking bets, and we're that back-end solution for them. From a technology perspective, they become kind of the marketing engine. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, I asked you a question. I forgot to get the answer. Okay, so when is going to be that aha moment where... You know everything is 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 cranking right. You got you got all these um, you got the aggregators going. When is going to be that moment? I, I I guess what what's the dollar amount that people are going to sit up and pay? Is it ten million run rate? I mean, what's going to be that number where, you know, where in the industry, you know, you're seen as a player? Yeah, I think we're 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 kind of close to being there. I think the aha moment every time you know we sign a B two B client is going to be exciting for our customers. Every time we finish a game and get that out there is going to be exciting for our customers. Um, whether it's that run rate or really more growth, as you see year on year growth, you're going to see that you know we're executing, and then the sky's the limit. You're seeing all the other big companies out there and and what they're doing and and the acquisitions in the space. Um, so for us, it's all about growth and executing on our plan, which is again the growth on B two C, signing B two B clients finishing games and of course growing through acquisition as well wait so how so right now how many of these b2b customers do you have we have two right now okay and how many do you need to have would you could you have by next year people that say wow this is like 20 i mean what's the number that you know what's the, the magic number i mean you're, you're seeing you're seeing client um platforms is just a couple clients getting acquired in the space okay. and that's not our goal obviously but we want to we want to ideally sign another three to five and get them up and running next year okay again and, and each so just so each of these b2b clients generates can is worth you know seven figures it, it really depends what kind of client they are if they're a sports okay. player just, just launching from scratch or they're an existing sports book with a 10-year history with a whole okay. bunch of customers and they just want to switch the tech to us okay so now the question is what are you doing what is the plan to get to start scaling these B2B to get like a hundred of these guys signed up. Can you get a hundred signed up? I mean, like what, what, what's, how do you, what's going to be the path to get to like a 25 million run rate? I think 25 million people are going to say, wow, this is, this is serious. Cause if you do 25 million, you know, the market could value you at a, a billion plus 40 times revenues. I mean, we're seeing that in the space. Business development, really. Um, again, executing on our on our platform to get the most robust platform, and then business development, getting that in the hands of as many people as possible. So okay. um, we have a really good team. Um, we're opening up a lot of doors. We're having a lot of great conversations. It's about getting up money line. It's about getting up, obviously, the other ones we have, and then just signing more next year. 
Okay, and uh, this guy that you brought on, uh, Mike Lee, is that that he's what he's what is his, his role is kind of dealing with the, the RNG game is develop getting those developed. What what's his role again? What's he's our, he's, he's our head of casino, so everything okay. from the development side to the actual um, execution on getting those games out. So he. Okay. Big, big name in the space, has been in the space for, for quite some time, has a lot of experience um, before with Genesis. I think that okay. studio had about 150 games um, in thousands of different sports books. So brings a ton of experience. We're very, very fortunate to get a guy like that uh, believing okay. kind of what we're doing and, and coming onto our team. And he's going to be, he's also responsible for business development. With these He'll be teams. very responsible for business development on the game side, yeah. Okay. And his previous company, you said, had, I think they had about 100, 100, 100 games. games. I think so. And, and how many B two B B two B customers did they have? They were, I think, in, in thousands of casinos. So I got to fact check that number, but um, they had signed a lot of aggregated partner deals. Okay, so this company. So what kind of numbers were they generating? Do you know what, what kind of revenues? I mean, sure. it's got to be pretty huge. If they got yeah, they were doing very well. Yeah, he went from he was a chief product officer there. He then became the CEO, uh, and then he's most recently joined us, which is awesome. Okay, so this is pretty good because essentially, bottom line is you have now a team of you know people who have done this before absolutely not just from our board but our our management team and the guys we're bringing on uh, recently it's um a star studded lineup we think okay a lot of this business is kind of relationship based it's a little bit a little bit old school you know the whole gaming thing is you know it has it, you know it's it's a relationship based trust based business absolutely yeah so um it's important to bring on these guys that's why it's important to have some of the board members we do they just open up doors for us Okay. Okay. And um, let me see here. Okay. So let me just, uh, let me see. If I, do I have any more questions? I want to get into the, we got a bunch of audience questions coming in here. You know what? I'm sorry. One question I got to get off the table. Then we're going to get to the audience questions. Okay. So the, and I, and I keep going back, you know, uh, bouncing around here. Okay. So the, um, the, you announced the, the data provider partnerships for the chameleon platform, right? So, yeah. and there's a bunch of names mentioned, like I'm reading this. I'm like, I don't know who's what these things do, what they are, whatever. Bottom line, I just want to know as an investor, okay, what does this mean for Chameleon, right? What is it going to do in terms of, okay, how much, how is it going to impact your revenues? How are all these data partnerships? Like, wh why do you need them? What are they going to do for you? How are you going to make more money? And just to, that's the question. Yeah, yeah, it's really important for us. So, you know, I think we, we've spoken a bunch that we're trying to build the most robust tech platform. And in order to do that, we need to bring in the best data providers, we need to bring in the best risk managers, management. So we're not just bringing one data provider to give us all sports. We want the best offering. So we're going down to a sport level. We have guys who just focus on like US player props. We have providers that focus on just horse racing. We have guys providing on just like European soccer. So us getting that kind of best data allows us to then offer that to clients give them the best offering so that they can then offer that to their clients and their customers uh, and to get more players. The more players they get, of course, the more rev share we get. So this data. Okay. So like, um, I don't have the names on my screen, but okay. So some of these data providers, uh, give me an example of one, like, like, like a like horse Pythia. racing guy. Just, Pythia horse racing. just for horse racing. Okay. Pythia, right? Pythia, I think. Yeah. Pythia. Okay. So I never heard, I mean, I never heard of them. I don't know what, okay. So let's say a company like Pythia, right? So what do they give you? They, what do they give you and what does the end user, user see on their screen? So they give us horse racing data as well as risk management on that horse racing. Um, and we get all the different horse racings uh, around the world. So they give us the most robust. So if you want to bet on Irish horse racing, we will have that event and allow you to bet on it. And with great traders behind the scenes um, that they do for you. So then we can then offer that to our clients. Um, and again, that allows them to market to get more customers because if they have potential customers in Ireland that want to bet on that, not every sportsbook will offer that. They can come to their sportsbook. Okay. So bottom line is what you're doing with this chameleon platform is you're making this like sort of like a, it's a turn, you're giving, you know, again, a, an online casino, which again, there's a bunch of these guys, right? And they all do something different. Nobody's really a specialist. I mean, maybe there might be a specialist in one thing, but if you give them this platform, all of a sudden they're able to have essentially, you know, more inventory, more possibilities, to, you know, sort of like a supermarket. Instead yeah. of having just, you know, uh, a couple of bottles of milk, now you have 100,000 SKUs for people to choose from. You could make more sales. So a guy could, so with the Pythian, essentially, uh, my understanding is now that you're giving this to, a, to one of your uh, casinos, now they can see all sorts of different, you know, wacky horse races around the world, like all sorts of niche things. I mean, 
in Ireland. I mean, how many more? Everywhere globally? Hong yeah, Kong? We, yeah. It's, yeah, globally, you know, one of the groups who signed Sports IQ, they focus on like US player props. Okay. So like down into like not just the game, but the actual how is the player going to do in the game? So you can watch a game and, and bet on that type of stuff as well. Okay, okay. So, so it's very it real there's a lot of real, real specialization involved. Yeah. Essentially, you give that to them and, and so there's two things. You, there's the data, and the data essentially is is that like live data basically? The live things, okay, so it's live data which which coming in and then at the same time there's a just explain that for anybody that's, that's the risk management side is what is that you give the you know, do you give that online casino sort of a um it's like a turnkey thing where they're not taking the risk essentially the risk is laid off or what are you doing for them yeah i mean they're they're, they're taking the risk but we're just helping to manage that risk in the back end okay. because they're not right. going to have traders who sit there and watch all these horse races and able to adjust the odds as people bet and all that type of stuff so it's called managed risk trading Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, you know, if somebody just has an online casino doing, I don't know, for example, I mean, what's a typical thing is what's a typical, you know, the most, what's the most mainstream online casino? What type is it? It's like what, uh, like blackjack or something. Oh, table games. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So somebody's got a thing that's just blackjack and they have some really good traffic or maybe they're doing, I don't know, cricket or something, right? That's the specialties cricket. And now they sign up with you. They give you, you know, I don't know, uh, a couple bucks, a million, a few million a year, right? And now all of a sudden, they're able to offer uh, horse races, betting on U.S. sports, betting on, uh, you know, uh, uh, women's archery, uh, you know, table, whatever, any type of thing that some degenerate would want, whatever. Okay, I mean, not the they're wonderful. You know. they, can, they can. It's essentially a flick of a switch for us. You can turn them on and turn them off. We want this. We want this. We want this. Turn okay. them on. We don't have them on. So. Okay. Okay. So it's, uh, okay. So it's a phenomenal thing. Okay. Uh, so now that you, you, how many? I think it's four, four, four data providers you brought on, right? This news announcement. How many people do you? Four, four new ones. Yeah. We've four got new ones. Okay. How how significant is this? Is this how how significant is this? Is are these new partnerships? Like, how much do you think that's going to be worth incrementally, in addition to what you're doing now? It gives us an advantage. It, it continues to build that moat that we talked about. Um, it allows us to market and. and showcase kind of our platform and why it's better than other people's platforms okay so uh, okay so good things happen okay so let me let's dive into some audience questions that's what this is all about we get some very good questions here uh dh i guess he's asking what's going on with canadian sports betting um maybe i'm let me paraphrase what are you doing yeah what's happening with yeah what are you doing with the sports betting in canada so ontario just opened up for for registration for licensing last week so that is what I'm spending the rest of my day on after this is going through that, putting together the right documents needed to actually fully apply. Um, just like we did in the UK and just like we did in Malta, the goal is to probably go for two licenses. One is a software supplier in Canada and one as well as just an internet gaming operator, which is a potential B2C platform. Okay. So in Canada, you're going to be offering um, a, the, the consumer facing side. So people will be able to bet with Fans Unite. Uh, possibly. That's something we're looking at, but okay. software supplier... For sure is what we're for sure is. okay okay and when you say okay so you have to apply for this how long does it take to get a license in canada for this is this we're not sure no one's ever no one's gotten it before right it's just opened up last week so okay. uh, but in other words but i think you have an advantage because like you're not like some random guy that shows up at the all at the the entire office and, hey uh, you know give me i mean basically you have a uk license you got a malta license you get what i mean what license do you have? I think in the US you have something also, right? What you Not yet, but yeah, the Malta and the UK licenses will hopefully give us a leg up, you know, being able to get licensed in tier one jurisdictions. We're a Canadian based company. We've never taken bets from Canada. You know, we've gone through that licensing process before. We're part of the Canadian Gaming Association. So yeah, I hope we can put forth a you know really strong application and, and hopefully be one of the first few to get licensed. Okay. Okay. And, and essentially because you have the UK and the UK gaming licenses seem kind of like as a you know that's hard to get, right? So that's kind of seen as like so, sort of the gold standard, yeah. The uh, the gold standard. So if you have that, that kind of gives you an edge. Does that does that give you like a fast track in in Canada or 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 not? What is that? What do Maybe you not a fast track, but we do think it'll, it'll hopefully give us an edge. You know, as as I go through the application process, they ask you, you know, what other licenses you have. You give them the information on that. We hope that looks highly favorable to, favorably for us. Okay, how many people do you think are going to be offering sports betting in Canada? 
Uh, I'm not sure. I think, I mean, it's a big market. People don't realize that Canada is a big market. So I think you're going to see all the big players come in. Um, right now, it's just Ontario that's opening up. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's just one province at a time. Right now, yeah. Just like okay. the just like the U.S. went state by state. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Similar. I, I thought it was more like. Okay, so it's what state by state, uh, province by province, basically. Okay. okay. Ontario is the biggest one, so that's great. But that's the first one going out. Uh, his part two. Any updates on what's happening in New Jersey and Colorado? Yeah. So New Jersey, um, we have been putting together application. We haven't formally applied yet. It just hasn't been a priority. The priority was, of course, getting the UK and all the, and signing more deals. Um, but it's something we're working on. Colorado, we're just waiting on regulators right now. Um, our platform is ready to go. Uh, Sky is kind of ready to go. We're just getting waiting for that nod from the regulators. So hopefully, hopefully we make progress on that very soon. So you know, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, when I when I talk about like the second inflection point, really, which is part of that real second inflection point, is when all these licenses actually kick in, and it takes a long time, not for you, for the whole everybody, getting these. It's a it's a real long process for anybody to get a license. It's like you know, boxes and boxes of documents. I mean, you they really look, I mean, I think you have, they look at like all your records from since you were born pretty much. Yeah, yeah the, you know, everybody you know I mean, like, yeah. yeah. UK multi took us almost, almost a year. The New Jersey one, I don't think it's gonna take us a year, but it's it's that next level of due diligence. Like you said, the, the amount of due diligence they're requesting from me from everyone in my family, everywhere we've traveled, every bank account, which is fine. We have all that information. It just takes a lot of time to put it all together. So, so, but, so essentially th that second inflection point is, is going to be, is, is going to involve really two things. When you have those, you know, let's say 20 of these B2B partner, you know, uh, customers. And at the same time, when you're also going to have those licenses, which is probably going to be, how long is it going to take you to get the, the do you th I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you can make a projection, but to, let's say to get the, the, Ontario, uh, some U.S. Though. How long is that going to take? Do you think is that going to be next year sometime? Yeah, we, we hope so. We hope it'll be early next year. Um, it's hard to make projections anytime you're de dealing with your regulators, and that's what we've kind of seen, especially in Colorado. Um, something we expect to be up in, in days could take weeks or months. Just yeah, I, this is I, the Colorado thing. That, that's this esports e betting. I, what you announced that I think in February, right? I mean, when was it? Was it like a couple? It's a while I remember, back. I remember when we announced it? Yeah. So it's making progress. We're we're itching to get that up for sure because okay. again, that's that's another inflection point. We feel like once we get that up, that'll be our first. Why uh, is that taking so long? Yeah, why is a lot, of, a lot of things in the back end on on, on the regulator side with okay. skins and platforms and all that stuff. Uh, we think we've done our part from the text, but from the tech stack, the servers, the geolocations, um, we'd be able to build all that out. So we're ready to go. I'm just waiting on that. But again, that's that's an inflection point because once we get um, once we get um, uh, uh, that went up. That's our first activation in the U.S., and hopefully that opens up uh, doors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the that last little one that just popped. Up. We're getting Ontario in this week. Uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say this week. Uh, we're, I'm filling in the forms. You're filling week. the forms. It's, a lot, filling it's a lot of documentation, but uh, we yeah. that's, we've gone through this so many times that uh, we know what they're looking for, and we're going to get our paperwork done pretty quick. Okay, so you know it's interesting. This is like you know, you know, Darius. You know, a lot of a lot of people in our audience. I mean, and again. A lot of micro cap investors they want things immediately. They want instant gratification. They, 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 you know, people assume okay, as soon as the guy shows up, that means next month the revenues are going to skyrocket to hundred million, and the stock is going to be a thousand x, and you know everybody's going to be you know flying rockets to the moon and all that good stuff. But the reality is, the the business you're in, one of the reasons why you have big multiples, big valuations in the space is you have big moats. You got massive regulation. So by the time somebody gets in there. You know, it's not going to be every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's only a small group of companies, and yeah. you know, it's it's a franchise basically. It's like a it becomes a license to print money essentially at at some point, which is the where the value kicks in. But it does take a little while. It doesn't happen overnight. It's so the yeah. real money. I think so. Ba the bottom line is the real money is going to be made over the next let's say nine, twelve, six, six to twelve months, roughly. Yeah. Next year, basically, next year, mid next year is when you're going to have, you know the real money kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great point. Like we have this long-term vision of what we're trying to do as a company and we have so much going on in the back end. Like there's not enough hours in the day we feel like to get all this stuff done. You know, obviously we want to get as many games out there as, as we can, but you know, once you get the concepts out then you have to build the game, once it's built, you have to bug test. Once it's bug test, you go through certification. Once it's certified, then you integrate into the platforms. Like these things take time, but like you said, it continues to build that moat licenses, 
take time, not just from application, but then review to then actually getting them. UK and Malta took almost a year. I hope the other ones don't take that long, of course. Um, but these things do take time. But you know, we're doing so much on the back end. I promise you. But but at the same time, you know, when I, we're talking about okay, so the the real money comes starts kicking in, the revenues, everything by next year. The reality is, you know, the stocks, the market is forward looking. So that means the stock could start running way in advance of that. So by the time, listen, by the time you guys get everything, by the time you're generating twenty million run rate, I mean the stock is going going to go way ahead of that. It's not going to it's not going to be just that day that you know it's it's going to. By the time you announce the stock is going to come back down, probably <laughs> that's the way it usually works. So it could start running way, way, way quicker. Uh, so let's get to a bunch of questions. Uh, Darius, you got a few minutes, please. Tell yeah, me I, got, I, I know, I know <laughs> the Ontario people are waiting for you, but we got yeah. we got a very important question. Here. Five minutes, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. We got a bunch of acquisitions. What's going on with M and A? Yeah, um, something we, we've spoken about is definitely a mandate for us. Uh, we've looked at so many deals. Uh, we've gone through due diligence on a, on a bunch. Again, that's something that, that that takes time, A, from negotiation to due diligence, seeing what you uncover and actually executing on a deal. So we we were very, um, you know, we've done two acquisitions since we've been public. We want to do another one. Um, it's, it's a mandate for us for sure. Okay, Chris is asking: Are you currently are you currently in negotiations for very large acquisitions? I don't know if you can answer that. If, if I mean, we're we're looking at deals every day. We're looking at deals with our board. We're doing due diligence on the ones we like. Um, we're, we've been looking for months. Okay, uh, when do you expect to start licensing at sports betting technology? So Moneyline, Moneyline will be the first one that's going out. Uh, we've already signed the deal with them. Um, should be getting up, getting them up in, in Q4. By the way, you know, you're in a great position to make acquisitions right now. You have a very good market cap, right? I mean, it's the stock, you have a liquid stock. I mean, you're you're like in the, you know, uh, catbird seat, I think they call it. I mean, you're in a great position to do it. So what kind of acquisitions? I mean, you have, you have anything you can, like, what's the type? What kind of technology? What's, what kind of things are you looking at? Sure, yeah. I think we're, you know, we're being all picky on, on the acquisitions. You know, we're not just going to make a deal for the sake of making a deal. Um, we're looking for specific things that we think can, Help our company um, and bring you know synergies to the company. So we're looking at a few things. We're looking at you know what's that kind of next McBookie 2.0, so a sportsbook and a casino, one that we think we can help grow top line, but also ones that we think we can implement our technology and help them on the bottom line. So we're interested in that. We're of course looking for more technology to bring into the Chameleon platform. Um, we like the customer acquisition play. Um, any any way to get more into the U.S. market is exciting for us. Um, so we're looking kind of at all those at all those things. Okay. Um, are you gonna have any guidance coming out? Yeah, we we, we probably will. Um, you know, not anything imminent, but uh, we put out some guidance before. We'll, we'll continue to do that moving forward. Uh, probably something like next year. Okay. Uh, let me see if we have any more questions. Okay. So money. Uh, okay. And uh, let's see. Okay. So. Questions. Okay, I think M and I think people. The M and A thing is a big, um, you know, is a big, uh, you know, ma of major interest to investors. Totally. Yeah. I mean, bringing in tech, bringing in users, bringing. And in you've raised. Product. I mean, you you're, you're sitting on what thirty million plus right now. Yeah, we're sitting on about uh, thirty six million Canadian. Thirty six million. That's a lot of money. Yep. Yeah. It's. I mean, y you're in a great position right now. Yeah, we're in a position of strength. Um, and again, we're just we're just being a little picky because we know what we want and, and we want to find a deal that, you know, not only brings that revenue and cash flow, but one that we, we think we can grow and scale. Okay. Uh, scale is the key word. Okay. Darius, uh, thank you again uh, for joining us. And uh, we hope to hear some, uh, you know, big news very soon. That sounds great. Thanks for having me, Jack. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining our live stream. We'll see you on the next one.